Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you three of my best bets for tomorrow's racing world. We're going to be paying our attentions to the first day of the November meeting at Cheltenham. Really looking forward to the next few days. There's going to be some high quality jumps action and if you haven't done so already I've uh, launched a brand new episode of the In The Saddle podcast where I was with uh, my usual co-host Mark Karoski, uh, pundit and former jockey uh, Paul Callahan, and also as well we were delighted to be joined by Nave Townsend from uh, Rainer and Racing who had lots of good opinions and lots of things to say. So uh, if you want to listen to it uh, where we're previewing all of the three days of the November meeting at Cheltenham as well as the Morgiana hurdle at uh, Punchestown on Sunday. If you want to listen to our thoughts and feelings on it covering all the big races just check it out in the description box below. There's links to our SoundCloud a Spotify iTunes account just click onto one of those and we should have uh, your uh, podcast platform preference covered so uh, that's that out of the way also as well before I get into those three tips tomorrow I quickly just want to reflect on how our selections ran today I felt it was a bit of an unlucky day for us today now we had obvious uh, horses that were were very disappointing obviously our selection at Taunton our first selection at Taunton another stay away never really hit the frame and so did Oak Vintage but away from that it was a little bit uh, frustrating um, we we were uh, a bit unlucky I thought with a chance on it uh, at Ludlow where he looked to be going really well and that's the second Nigel Twist and Davis runner at Ludlow in the last few weeks that's fallen when they look like they could have been the winner you might remember we put up Gur Lille and that one still gives me shivers when that horse fell at the last so yeah really unlucky with that one and also as well out on, out on patrol for uh, Alexander Thorne and Alan King we put uh, that horse up at six to one and was quite a bit of money around for it went off around about three to one a uh, second favorite in the end and even though yes she was being niggled along she was responding to pressure really well and I thought over the last we had it in the bag you know because if you look at the eventual winner the JP horse um for phil hobbs who we put up a couple of his horses yesterday and they just got beat but um yeah unfortunately we didn't find the winner there but if you go back to that horse um it was traveling really well into the race but then made a couple of mistakes at the last couple of hurdles and uh, in the end was able to regain itself and flew home and showed a really good turn of foot our horse definitely got the better jumps at the last couple of hurdles but it was just really frustrating to be chinned in the last uh, few uh, yards of the race. Yeah, really disappointing there because if that won, it would have been a profitable day. The only thing of note for us today that was any good was our nap. That was Shattered Love, advertised at 2-1 to one last night. was really well fancied and in the end absolutely hacked up. You know, she proved that she is a really classy mare. Obviously, she had probably gone off the boil a little bit after her JLT win at the festival a couple of years ago. But uh, she's a classy mare on her day, you know, and over two and a half miles, I definitely think that's her trip. Maybe she might go for the mare's chase at the festival. She'd probably be a major player and that would be over the right kind of trip as well. So, yeah, Shattered Love, a lot to like about her, I think, going forward. And and there's one not to discount for future races. So, yeah, um, that was the only thing I've noticed today. At least we had a winning nap. But, yeah, it could have been a lot better. A bit of a hard luck day, I felt, with a couple of our selections today. And also, as well, I should have mentioned Ligon Rock was quite disappointing, actually. I never really uh, got into the race. Was up there, but just wasn't travelling that well uh, compared to a lot of his other rivals that were on the front end. So yeah, that's how today went. But we've not been in bad form the last couple of days. Had a 14-1 to 1 winner on Wednesday. But uh, yeah, we could be uh, doing with finding a few more winners to get those profits up. So hopefully uh, we can find some winners tomorrow with my free selections at Cheltenham. I thought it wasn't a bad day tomorrow. And I've actually got one at a bit of a price, which I'm going to leave um, to, as my last selection with my long shot. But uh, let's get on to the first tip of the day, which is going to come with my next best in the 150 at Cheltenham. Magic Saint here, I think, uh, is the one to be with tomorrow for Brian Carver, claiming five, riding for Paul Nichols. Anyone that's been paying attention to the National Hunt game of late will know that Paul Nichols is in absolutely red hot form. I think he's had pretty much a double every day this week, so you definitely want to be following this his horses. Magic Saint is definitely a class animal on his day and I think he's definitely going to come forward from his last run which was in the grade two old run chase at Aintree you know I don't think that was a bad renewal of that race you know and last season he needed his run where he actually ran at Cheltenham 
in the Paddy Power Gold Cup and then he went on to win on the second start at Newbury. So he's probably a horse that just uh, needs a run to come on the ground. Good soft shouldn't be a problem for him as well. And I think dropping down to two miles will definitely suit him. He wants a fast pace to be aimed at and he's going to get that in here tomorrow. The likes of On The Slope will probably try and uh, be handy making the pace and also as well beat the judges a horse that likes to be up there and there's one or two others that could be up there. So if they do uh, go at a fast tempo tomorrow, I think it's going to suit Magic saying he's a, he's a good jumper of a fence, you know, he's definitely got an engine but he needs to be played late. But when he is played late, he's often got quite a good turn of foot and that's his main asset and his main weapon. And even though, yes, he is off a mark of 152 with um, Brian Carver's £5 claim. In essence, he's going to be running off a mark of 147, which I think is fairly workable for him tomorrow. You can back him around about 10 to 3, which I do think is a valid price. And I think this horse uh, tomorrow can go and get the job done for us. And I'd be disappointed, actually, if he wasn't there or thereabouts come uh, the winning line. So quite brief there with Magic Saint, but I think he's got a solid chance in that race tomorrow. Again, we're not going to be taking too long on our next tip, actually, with my nap of the day. Runs in the 335, the Ballymore Grey 2 trial. Um, 335 Cheltenham for does he know is a good thing here for David Bass and Kim Bailey and I was surprised actually it wasn't odds on I think 5-4 still has a little bit of value in it 2 from 2 uh, this season and 1 over the course and distance last time really impressively and if you look at the race as a whole tomorrow I don't really think there's anything to be frightened of there's nothing really jumping off the page at me uh, Graham Mogul on paper probably would be the horse that you would say poses the biggest danger but I don't think actually the race he won at Chepstow last time out was that good and I know that he has had his problems along the way so yeah I'm not really too worried about any of his uh, opposition in this race tomorrow and Kim Bailey's horses have been in excellent form operating uh, at a 31% strike rate in the last uh, couple of weeks so the yard have been flying you know and there's just a lot to like about this horse and if I was actually pricing him up I think he should be around about an even money shot possibly 10 to 11 uh, on so uh, yeah uh, quite solid on his uh, credentials tomorrow and if he replicates his run the last time he does have to give away three pounds but that shouldn't be enough to stop him in my opinion I think there's a lot more to come so does he know it's going to be my nap of the day not original selection again I think he's uh, he's um, a good thing tomorrow. We then go with my um, my outsider of the day, the long shot of the day, as we like to call it here on my YouTube channel. And we are taking a bit of a flyer on this one, and it is a bit more of um, it is a bit more of a left field selection. It runs in the four or five at Cheltenham last race of the day in a novice's handicap hurdle. And I thought Mocha Shell for uh, Isabel Williams and Evan Williams could be the ones to be with here. Isabel is going to be able to claim a handy five pounds off the horse's back. So that's a nice tick there. And this horse actually ran a lot better than uh, the, the form book says at uh, Hereford last time out when it finished in fourth place. Now this horse that day was running off a mark of 110 and has actually been dropped two pounds, which is definitely an advantage for us. And with the five pounds off, in essence, he's going to be running off a mark of 103. Now, if we look back through some of his form, he actually had some promising juvenile form last year. His winner, or his fourth place effort, I should say, at Kempton, actually worked out not too badly, produced a few subsequent winners, and then um, showed a little bit more ability by making the frame on his next couple of starts. And like I said, that run at Hereford last time wasn't too bad. It was behind a horse of Nicky Henderson's called Fugitive's Drifts, uh, who's now rated 137, and he had one on his previous start at Banger on D before that okay he didn't he didn't do it in his next uh, run at Newbury but that was quite a warm race for the grade and uh, and that, like I said I think at Hereford last time this horse ran a lot better than the bare form suggests that was over two miles three dropping back tomorrow to two miles I think will be a massive positive for it and if they go a good strong gallop here I think this horse can come with a late run and at 50 to one with quite a few firms I saw that with William Hill playing five places on the race I think this is a really big price uh, tomorrow and I think it can give us a cracking run for our money and if I was pricing this horse up I would have it around about a 16 to 1 14 to 1 chance in my opinion I think that should be the correct price I think 50 to 1 represents a good bit of value there and I think with a strong pace there's going to be quite a few front runners that would like to set a good gallop to aim at and I think our selection Mocha Shell could just be picking up the pieces also as well if you go back through some of his platform not bad in Ireland was rated in the low 80s and now has a mark I think of 77 did run on the flat, uh, flat Chester a couple of starts ago but this Mocha Shell tomorrow I'm really sweet on the chances under a nice low racing weight I don't think this is the strongest race in the world and I think that race at Hereford last time out was a little bit better than the their results suggested so for me i think this horse has a good chance at a massive price tomorrow and there's one not to uh, give up on so yeah gonna be my long shot of the day a bit of a left field selection 
But I think after two horses, I expect us to go and get the job done. Um, I think this long shot here is one we can have a bit of a flyer on. So yeah, that's going to be my long shot of the day, Muckershell and the 405. So I'll quickly just recap there. In the 115 at, Chel in the 150 at Cheltenham, we go Magic State, 10 to 3. Win only bet as the next best. In the 335 at Cheltenham, we go Does He Know at 5 to 4, win only. And in the 405 at Cheltenham, Muckershell uh, for Izzy and Evan Williams, 50 to 1 each way, uh, 5 places. Is William Hill. So there are the three tips for tomorrow's racing. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying them. And if you haven't done so already, please remember to hit the subscribe button. Also, as well, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle is at LuckyLoader15. And if you want to find out a little bit more about myself, my website is www.chrisloaderracing.co.uk. So please game responsibly. Hopefully, we can have some winners at Cheltenham tomorrow, and we'll be seeing you soon.